HLN legal analyst Joey Jackson is here along with Evan Mandry. He is from the John Jay College of Criminal Justice and author of Wild Justice, The Death and Resurrection of Capital Punishment in America. Thank you, gentlemen, for being with me. Joey, I start with you. Will this open the floodgates for previous cases, current cases? We know that there are only five high-profile ones being ordered. You know, Len, it's a great question, and of course it remains to be seen. I, I might remind viewers that we have a very robust uh, system of government and justice, wherein there are many layers and checks and balances, and so just because someone may be scheduled to be executed does not mean that they will be executed. I would, however, caution uh, that I think this policy, uh, you know, certainly is misguided. I think we're in another era, uh, sometimes feeling like we're in the twilight zone in terms of where we are and where our government is in terms of the treatment of its citizens, what it's doing. Uh, attacks on immigrants, attacks on members of the African community, just attacks in general. And now, after 16 years, I might also remind everyone that that's through a Republican and a Democratic administration, and now a Republican one. What's the? What, why hasten to do this now? And so, you know, look, I will not apologize for anyone who commits any crime. I think that you need to be punished to the full extent of the law. The issue is whether or not, you know, the death penalty would be appropriate. That's for everyone else to decide. That's for everyone else to make judgments on. What I will say is that I remind everyone that last year there were 150 wrongful convictions that were reversed, representing about 1,600 years in jail that people served for crimes they didn't commit. And so is it a foolproof system? No. Is death penalty the way to go? Uh, you know, I don't think so. People can have their own judgments on that. But I think certainly it raises a question, and we're all going to have to ask ourselves, who are we? Are we the United States of America? Or are we Iraq? Are we Iran? Are we North Korea? Uh, and so it's problematic. And so I say that, you know, the Justice Department, I'm not sure the message they're sending trying to send other than a new era of cruelty, a new era of fear among citizens. Uh, but I think, uh, you know, it's certainly not the wise policy choice in my view. Evan, do you think it's a good idea? There are some people that support the death penalty. They say the, the worst of the worst do deserve to be put to death. I mean, I think resurrecting the federal death penalty is trivial from a policy standpoint. Um, there have been approximately 1,500 executions in the United States since in the modern era of the death penalty since it was re-implemented and reauthorized by the Supreme Court in 1977. And there have only been three at the federal level. So the idea that there is going to be any public policy benefit, even if five additional people are executed, is just silly. Um, it's not cost effective and it's certainly not going to achieve any measure of deterrence. And in the best case, if you're a supporter of capital punishment, there's a very minimal deterrence effect to the death penalty and probably none. So, Joey, how would this play out on a state level? Would this supersede the state law where it's not legal? You know, it will not. Uh, the fact is, is that we are a sovereign nation, and what that means in English is that the federal government sets its uh, its priorities, uh, of course, uh, with the head being the president, and then you have a Congress, right, opposed of a House of Representatives, 435 members, and senators, 100 of those. And so federal government makes federal policy, but states are sovereign. They all have governors and state legislatures, and they can govern themselves. And so the federal government, I gather, is trying to set the example. I would not say, though, that the state government has any legal responsibility to follow suit. In fact, they may in fact pull back uh, as a result of this. And so it raises a public policy question. Every state is free to pick and choose whether you're going to have the death penalty, whether you won't have the death penalty. You know, whether you're going to be firm on gun control, just by way of example, whether you're not going to be firm on gun control. But the fact is, is that I don't see it having any uh, particular effect or any immediate effect upon what state governments choose to do now or moving forward in the future. So, Evan, if this is more of a bureaucratic move, why do you think it's happening now? I heard Joey ask that question in his first answer. Um, I mean, it, 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 to my mind, it only is a symbolic act um, that has uh, a political motivation, which is to appeal to a conservative base. I mean, I, I think, you know, I, I teach ethics and um, uh, I ask students all the time about circumstances in which uh, the death penalty might be the morally justified punishment, but in terms of public policy, whether what you're trying to do is uh, run a system that uh, actually deters crime and reintegrates offenders back into society, um, the debate on this is long settled. And certainly, even if you were a proponent of capital punishment, what Barr and um, Trump are proposing to do couldn't possibly have any beneficial effect. Uh, gentlemen, thanks so much for being with us. We appreciate it. Joey Jackson and Evan Mandry, thank you. Thanks for having me.